Monet Dahada is the one pulling all the strings. She's behind Carrie's murder, Zeke's murder, and fucking Lauren Baldwin's Lauren murder. Lauren Baldwin died in a car accident. End of story. You honestly believe that too? I believe it because it's true. How much longer do I have to pretend that I'm dead? It's a matter of time. Lauren alive is not surprising and in my recent video I stated that if I am the writer, there are so many ways I could keep Lauren alive unless I don't have a future for the character. In this video, I'll be talking about Lauren surviving, why and how she managed to survive, who Ife really is now and how Jenny is playing sax. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you are welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. It is Power Book 2 Ghost Season 3 Episode 1. Now let's get straight into the topic. Lauren is alive and under what I would describe as witness protection. Now, how did all this happen and how come there is a CI amongst Tariq's crew and who is this CI Jenny talked about? Well, if you don't want to share, then I should just I have a CI going. embedded with them. It's a matter of time. Now, this is my theory and I want you to pay close attention to it and all the references I'll be making. Starting from Courtney Kemp. Now, if you remember Courtney Kemp in her live video session on season 2 after episode 9 was aired, she said we should pay attention to the lyrics of the music that was played at the scene where Effie came back to sleep by Tariq after she took Lauren away. She also stated that that song was used on purpose and I'm sure most of you didn't see any reason for that song till the season was over. Now, when Lauren's life was in danger for wearing wire around Tariq, she became scared for her life and was willing to leave town for her safety. Now, these are the possibilities to how Lauren ended up with Jenny and Ify becoming her CI. If Lauren was able to wear a wire, she'll be able to keep a tracker on her, isn't it? Now, to become a CI for law enforcement is either by voluntary or they have some debt on you that has been used against you to become their CI or risk going to jail. Now, study this closely. When Braden was picking up Lauren, there was a car parked opposite Braden's car. This is no coincidence that there is a car parked here. The person in this car, I believe, was watching over Lauren. Now, hypothetically speaking, let's say when Lauren was going with Braden, she had a tracker on her, probably in the small bag she was carrying, which has been given to her by Jenny with the mindset that if at any time she is kidnapped by a potential killer, she can be tracked down. So when Braden went away with her, Jenny and her people were tracking them. Now, if you look behind them, there were two cars following Braden and Lauren. One can say it's just a coincidence and those cars are probably some random people on the road. But if you notice, the cars were not speeding at all, more like they were doing a jolly ride on the road. Well, I might be wrong about these two cars, but let's fast forward to the subject matter. Now, when Efe took over from Braden, they continued to track her. Now, here is what I think happened, okay? When Efe finally decided to push the car with Lauren unconscious in it, Jenny and her people got to the scene few minutes after the car was pushed into the water. Now, if you look closely at the trailer of this season, there was some guilt written over Ife's face. I'm sure that was the moment she was caught red-handed in an attempt to commit murder. So what happened? Jenny decided to make Ife a CI or risk going to jail in an attempt to kill Lauren. So quickly, Lauren was saved and sent into Witsec and Ife went home to sleep by Therick that night. So if you notice in the trailer for the next episode, Lauren was shown in the car being pushed into the water by Ife. So the intention by Ife was very clear and defined from the beginning to kill Lauren. Her plan didn't work because she was possibly caught red-handed, hence becoming a CI to Jenny. Now, if you cast your mind back to episode 9 of season 2, that is why Ife seems scared and in deep thought when she entered the room to sleep by Tariq. And if you look closely at her mood, she was looking like she was going to betray Tariq every day. And she wasn't in that mood because she successfully killed Lauren. She was looking that way because she took a deal that would not be easy for her, especially around Tariq. So Ife wasn't worried about what she did to Lauren. She was worried about being caught and becoming a mole. So if you study her, ever since she's been acting weird. And if you notice, Efe is always interested in knowing everything. Even when Tariq keeps telling her that this new connect, Noma, is very dangerous, she seems not to care about the danger she's putting herself into. Why? Because she's on a mission and needs to report. So if you ask me personally, this is how I think the narrative changed. Mind you, initially, 
The idea was to kill Lauren because her RIP post was released after the end of the episode. And I'll be doing a different video on that later. Now, I don't know what you think, but I think Ify is the CI working for Jenny. You heard her say to Tariq she doesn't need protection. It means she knows very well that she's undercover now. Let me know what you also think by dropping your comments and theories in the comment section below. Now, let's move on to Jenny and Sachs. As it stands now, Jenny is playing Sachs in her scheme and this will land him in trouble soon. She told Sachs about Lauren's death, fake some tears to see if she can get some information from Sachs, only for Sachs to tell her to take the L and give up. And she wants to trade every evidence with Sachs and Sachs is definitely going to fall for it. Now I can see people playing themselves here. If Blanca gets to know Jenny is even taking any information from Sachs, she might not even collaborate with Jenny again knowing what Sachs did to her in the original power. Sachs in his quest is going to find out that Davis is the one who committed the manslaughter his brother Till is serving for. And this is where I think Sachs will flip with this information to become a target. Well, some of you think Sachs will survive this season but I'm still with the view that Based on how this first episode has been structured, Sachs is all by himself now and no one will risk their lives to save him. Not to talk of becoming a snitch to Jenny because of some love emotions. And we all know if Sachs is caught giving information to Jenny, it's over for him. He said it so himself. And I can't wait to see how this triangle between Jenny, Blanca and Sachs play out. Now, Blanca giving Mecca's penthouse to Monet to see the kind of people it will attract was a very smart move. Dante Spears' penthouse is officially yours. How the fuck is that possible? Now, many will understand this scene differently, but this is why I think the lights were cut off before Norma entered the penthouse. Reasons being that if there are hidden cameras installed inside, no one will see their faces and what they came there to do. Now, I personally believe that Blanca went further to bag the house and possibly set some hidden cameras in there for both visual and audio evidence. I don't know about you, but knowing Blanca, this is what I think. Let me know what you also think about this in the comment section. Now, let's agree that Blanca bagged Maker's penthouse before Kane had that party with the Connect and had this conversation with Tariq and Braden before Noma and her goons came in. We can then conclude that potentially she has Tariq, Braden and Kane on tape discussing business course correct, etc. Even though there were little or no specific to their discussions. Now, if I am Blanca and I'm bagging the house with either audio or video device, I'll make sure I power that device with constant electricity instead of a device that will require interchangeable batteries so that the device will not run out of power. Hence, can stay for as long as I can get enough evidence. Now, having this in mind, and as smart as Norma is, They've decided to cut off every power in that room before entering so that if there are any devices installed in the room, they won't be captured. Now, let me know what you also think in the comment section so far. Now, let's talk about Monet and Diana. Monet feels Diana is the cause of Zeke's death. She feels if she hadn't exposed the maternity of Zeke in the first place, all this wouldn't have happened. And I also think if Diana didn't look inside Mecca's bag, Lorenzo wouldn't have had any reason to step out again in an attempt to kill Mecca himself. Now, Lorenzo's idea of Diana also attending Stansfield is not going to help matters between Diana and Monet. The mentioning of Stansfield alone will remind Monet about Zeke and to think of the fact that Diana is also there now will rather make Monet extremely angry with Diana. Drop your thoughts in the comment section about this as well. And so you know, in this season's trailer, we saw Diana making out with a guy that isn't Terry. After watching this first episode, I'll say that Diana will be having some random affairs with this TA or teaching assistant guy. That was the guy that was in the thriller making out with Diana. Now, I think apart from Monet, Kane is equally not happy with his sister. Now, this scene was very funny to me. When Lorenzo was cheering Diana up, she waved the family and, of course, as expected, Monet was going to show attitude. But with Kane, his reaction was very funny, even though it was sad seeing Diana treated as a black sheep. Now, let me ask you, do you think Diana is to blame for Zeke's death? Secondly, do you think things would have been different if Diana didn't expose Monet to Zeke or even look inside Mecca's bag? Don't forget, even if Diana didn't say anything, Mecca was still in play with regards to Zeke. Let me know where you also stand, either with Monet in this or you side with Diana. 
If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, share, like, and most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.